Here's an example of an experiment that would look at the characteristic emission of light from various atomic species. In this experiment, light is generated from this uh, vapor tube right here. It's a, much like a light bulb or a fluorescent light. And the, the evacuated light bulb is then filled with a vapor. It could be sodium, it could be neon. And a current is passed through it by, vir by virtue of this voltage source over here on the left. So as a result of current flowing around this way, then the current is made to pass through the gas, much like in a neon light, which excites the gas, and the, and the gas emits light in all different directions. Well, some amount of the light is made to pass through these two slits right here. And as a result of these two slits collimating uh, some portion of the light from the, the vapor tube, uh, it's made into a beam. And this beam it can, consists of wavelengths of unknown uh, spectrum. And so we can envision it as essentially a broad band. But we're going to do an experiment which actually measures uh, the wavelengths of this, of this light beam coming from this particular vapor. And that's done with a prism. So the prism, as you know, is made of uh, some sort of high index material like glass. And so the light refracts as it's going from here into here and then out again. And if you've ever seen what happens when light bends through a prism, different colors bend by different amounts. So it turns out to be that red bends a little bit less and blue and violet bend more. And this occurs because light refracts when it bends from up in an area of low index, like air, into an area of high index, like glass. And then the shape of the prism, the equilateral triangle here, uh, causes light to refract again uh, the back, when it goes back into air. If the index of refraction of glass was just a constant, then all these different lights of different colors would bend by the same amount, and I'd still have a white light beam coming out, just as I had a white light beam going in. But the fact is that index, the index of refraction of glass is not a constant versus wavelength. In fact, it varies a little bit. So one thing I could ask here is that you identify what must this variation of the index of refraction versus wavelength look like. So I'd like you to pause this video momentarily and sketch for yourself what you think a graph would have to look like of index or refraction in the vertical axis versus wavelength in the horizontal axis in order to generate the kind of separation of light that you see here in this picture. Well, here's an actual measurement of the index or refraction of glass ordinary glass uh, as a function of wavelength. The visible extends from somewhere down around 400 nanometers on up to 700 nanometers. So this graph more or less encompasses the visible uh, wavelength spectrum. 700 nanometers would be more like the red and 400 nanometers would be something more like violet. And it should be pointed out that the graph has a suppressed zero the lower edge of this graph in the vertical axis is an index of refraction of 1.51. The upper edge here is 1.53. So there's only about a 2% difference in the index of refraction uh, across this whole graph. But this small difference in the index of refraction is, is sufficient to make the violet light in the violet bend by a larger amount, because the index of refraction is larger, compared to the index refraction uh, here at 700 microns or 700 nanometers uh, in the red. So that's why in this picture one sees that red bends less and violet bends more. Well, going back to our experiment, 
here's what would have been seen if light from a vapor tube on the left goes through these two colonnade slits and then uh, a color separating prism and that is analyzed over here on the screen at the far back. Indeed the red would be bent less and the blue would be bent more but what was seen in the emission spectrum of light from various types of vapors is that there would be some perhaps broadband of colors but there were certain characteristic lines presented as these dark stripes here. So what's shown in the horizontal axis is wavelength and these lines re represent the particularly strong emission points for two particular gases, one sodium and one mercury. And we see in the case of sodium there's something emitting characteristically in the yellow at 620 nanometers. In the case of mercury there's something all the way out at 700 nanometers, but then there are characteristic lines extending beyond the visible and into the ultraviolet, just as there is for the sodium, and you notice that the two patterns are not the same. So every gas seems to have its own uh, characteristic pattern. The same was seen in the pattern of absorption. If I had a white light source now, something that emit, emitted all wavelengths, and it would shine light from all different directions, I could make that light pass through a gas cell where this, gas, this cell would have gas of various uh, types, and again make a slit in a, in a color separating prism. I would again look at what colors arrive at a screen here in the back. Red would always be bent less, blue would always be bent more. And here I see the types of spectra of lines of absorption for such uh, gases. And here's again yellow for the sodium. And now there's nothing observed in the visible for mercury, but there's something all the way out here in the ultraviolet. So there are some, some very interesting characteristic patterns 